Energize show up the Irish. Okay, what's going on, guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Energize the Face Off. Ross, <laughs> introduce the guest, man. Today, we've got an absolute banger in the Cage Warriors featherweight division between Harry Hardwick and Steve Amble. Guys, how are you doing? Not doing too bad. <laughs> All is good. Steve, how yeah, are you doing? Yeah, same for me. Um, all's good at work at the minute so yeah having a little break love the world there, there we have a ba- Baz when we saw this matchup we were like these are two of the best characters in Cage Warriors and on top of that this this is very much uh, possibly a uh, number one contender fight in the featherweight division Harry you're undefeated in your last four do you see this 100% as a number one contender fight and also do you feel like it's even more of a number, no, even more of a number one contender fight the fact that you're fighting on the same night as the featherweight title uh, yeah, like the, the, there's no denying at all that this is the number one contenders fight. Like, Amable's got a, a good body of work anyway, despite the, the like, you know, that's not including his recent streak, which I think outside of um, Buchenic, I think he's the longest win streak and then we're tied on unbeaten streaks because I got a salty old draw in my last one. Um <laughs> So, yeah, like, th- this is the number one contender fight. There's no if ands, maybes, or buts about it. And, and Steve, what way do you see it? Uh, for me, I already feel, see myself as a number one contender. Um, I feel I could probably wait out this until, you know, February, March time to see who wins. But I don't want to wait about for them boys. Do you know what I mean? Um, rather just get a fight. So, for me, it is a, I feel it as a risk, but... You know, it's a risk I'm willing to take. Um, I'm not going to sit on the sidelines and wait around. Steve, and Steve, Steve well, did you feel like this was the card you had to get on as well? Because it's like there's so many eyeballs on the card now. Like, obviously, Paul's taking on Jordan. Uh, we just had Kalen Lockran on with uh, Luke Shanks, and that's a face-off not to be missed. Yeah, Do you just I'll feel like that card? Just so much, uh, has, <laughs> Do you feel like there's so much hype on this card that you had to get on it as well? Yeah, I was, I was aiming for this card, or obviously the the next one at the BT studios, but obviously this one makes sense with obviously those two boys fighting. Um, you know, it just makes sense. The winner of this one, you know, goes in the cage, whoever, you know, wins that one and little face off in the cage sort of thing. Um, just sets it up nicely. Yeah. Really, really does. Um, Harry, obviously you've got some training. Well, I'm not too sure if you do, but I know George got some training in with Jordan Buchanich. Um, Tell us this. How do you feel like, or where, where do you think your place is in the division? Obviously, Steve thinks he's the number one contender. Where do you think you fall in the division? I feel like I'm the number one contender. It's just like <laughs> it, it, uh, we're we're all. It's it's a selfish spot full of people competing for the number one spot. Yeah. Like I'd be offended if he didn't think if he didn't think he was the number one contender, and if Jordan doesn't think he's the number one, that's that's how it works. True, true, true that, true that. That's exactly but, uh, how it works. Some sometimes people think that, like you know, well, uh, I need to get this win to be, you know, solidified as number one. But uh, look, we're we're dying to see this fight, Harry. Where do you think you hold any advantages over Steve? Um, I, I can block punches with my face. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just like I think volume, uh, k- sort of cage awareness, being able to like string stuff together. Um, I do feel like Steve is just like incredibly solid everywhere. So like, you know, like it can't just be like, oh, I I hold this, I hold this, I'll do this. It's just like he's he's solid everywhere, and he's he's been in that many fights at this point where I like, I don't feel like I'm going to surprise, like overly surprise him with much. Um, You know, you you see now our fight. Oh. I'll just drive it at a ridiculously uncomfortable pace for both of us and then probably sit in the back afterwards feeling like I've died. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I'll sit down beside you afterwards and we'll have a chat. <laughs> yeah, don't forget the parmos this time, by the way. Jeez. I, yeah. the parmos in the post, unfortunately, is no more. No. Oh, my God. Is this, so, this an exclusive? Called... Is this, this an exclusive? Is, uh, not particularly. Parmo Mark. <laughs> I mean, his, his name isn't actually Parmo Mark, but... Um, it is for this. He has, I believe quite wisely, decided to fuck off to Thailand where shit's not really expensive and he's finishing some business degree or something. 
So unfortunately, there is no Pomos in the post at the minute. Like, Rumor has it the Hardwicks actually ate them out of business. That's what I heard. I mean, <clears> Steve, like <laughs> Steve, before we, Steve, before we get into any more like seriousness, like Paramos, have you had a Paramo before? No, what is it? I ain't got a clue. <clears throat> well, the, thing, <laughs> the part of every interview that I have to do. So it is a, it's like tea sides dish. Um, it was actually invented by an American soldier who decided to live here after World War II. Uh, There's some, some trivia for you. But it is like like a chicken breast, butterflied out, breaded, deep fried, thick bechamel sauce laid on top, cheddar on top, grilled. And then the, the most popular dip to have it with is like like really strong, like offensively garlicky garlic meal. It's fucking nice. Those sound good. <laughs> like, <laughs> like even like people who are skeptical of the idea, like, um, oh, that doesn't particularly like white sauce and was like, thought, you know, is, is from down south. And she, she was like terrified the first time she came up here that she wouldn't actually like it. And, you know, oh, no, she loves it. Yeah. I was sat there like, I didn't realize I was doing it, but I was apparently just glaring at her, like just waiting to see her reaction. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Let us know in the comments. What way do you eat your paramos? Uh, Steve, like, do yes. you see yourself now as in the best form of your life right now? You, like, you're coming into your prime. You're on a four or five win streak. Is this the prime of the Diddy Kong? Um, yeah, like leading up to the last title fight I had, that obviously on this weight at, I was in, you know, phenomenal, phenomenal uh, condition then. Um, thought I was in the best shape then, obviously. A few terrible losses. Um, and now I've come back stronger again. So, you know, yeah, I, I can't see myself being in any better sort of condition or position at the moment um, than what I have been before. So, yeah, it's a um, great position to be in. I'm ready to go. And Harry, what about yourself, bud? Obviously, your brother George is the lightweight champion, like getting all the, the training in, which, what, like, how far do you see yourself off, like, becoming a Cage Warriors world champion? Well, my plan is this, like, it's MMA, shit never really goes to plan. But my plan is win on November 4th, take very little damage, which I feel like knowing me is the bit that's going to put a fucking banner in the world, and then be ready to go again uh, December 31st. Because um, I've only had one fight so far this year, and, you know, it, it's great. Like, I, you know, I like fighting. I like being active. Um, so that's that's a bit annoying. Um, as much as like you, you kind of want to be fighting Jordan or Paul. I do. I, like, I don't see either of them staying around. You know, what I mean, like it, it's it's like you can't like obviously like call outs and stuff. Yeah, are there, but like that's just my hunch. But whatever happens, happens. I'm just. My ideal world is I get November 4th and then December 31st. And that's why you can't miss this one, Ross. Cage Warriors 145 London, November 4th, live on UC hmm. Fire Pass and at the Indigo at the O2. If you want to get tickets, get on to Harry and definitely get on to Steve as well if you want to get tickets, Ross. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is definitely one not to be missed. This is one of the most stacked cards I've seen Cage Warriors put on in a while. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very interested in seeing how it goes down. Um, Steve, obviously... The Cage Warriors titles that lose you in in your career. How much does that actually yes. mean to you to get that shot at the belt? Uh, not so much now. To be fair, that uh, that's what you know messed me up the last time. I was putting so much mm. pressure on myself. I was just overthinking. I was like, oh, if I beat Mads, UFC's coming to London in March. Beat Mads, I'll be on that. You know, in the UFC, all of this overtrained, killed myself. Um, didn't make the way, and then obviously all of that just it just you know just messed with my head. It was just just overthinking everything, um, mm. and then since then sort of just relax and just taking it as is. It's just sort of mindset is if, if I lose, I lose sort of thing. Um, and you can see it during my fights. I'm I'm so much more relaxed, um, more confident. I'm not overthinking anything. But even in the training, I've I've scaled my training down. Um, not so as intense now. Um, and it, it, it's paying dividend. I'm, I feel a lot better, a lot, a lot more comfortable. 
Um, so obviously it'd be nice to get that shot and get that belt. Um, cause that's what, that's what I'm in a division for, you know, I'm in a division and with cage warriors cause I want to be the champion. Um, I'm not here just to make numbers up. So yeah, getting that. So it's not really like, ah, oh, it's a must, I must get it, but you know, that's, that's the end goal. So yeah, I'll be, that's what I'll be going for. Question for both of you, because obviously, you know, things change very, very quickly in the fight game and um, pullouts happen at times. If there was a pullout in the main event, uh, we had Jordan View Chenich on and he actually said that uh, he, he was telling Morgan Charrier to stay ready. Um, would you guys be insulted if Morgan Charrier got uh, selected over you guys? Start with yourself, Steve. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't feel I lost to Jordan when I fought him. Um, simple as that. Um and I, feel I haven't like lost a recurring in... team, Steve. People feel What's that, like, sorry? I feel like that's a recurring team. People feel like when yeah. they fight Jordan, they didn't lose to him. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's all he's won is split decisions. He was losing against Bevy Hendon and then pulled out a you know, a sneaky sub. I don't think he's actually won a clear fight um since since he fought before he fought me. So um yeah, I... Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> so, sorry, yeah, but Chari- Chari- uh, Jordan. Oh yeah, Chari- just, Um No, he's lost relief. his last. He's lost his last two. Do you know what I mean? He's had. He had his shot. He's had his chance. He needs to uh, at least get a good couple of wins. Same. Same for me. The position I was in when I lost to Mads. You know, I fought Perry Goodwin again. Hundred percent did not lose that fight. Um, you know what I mean? Now I've been put back on the back burner. It's taken me three years to get back to this position. Um, so yeah, if. if if Chari got, you know, picked over me or anyone, do you know, what I mean? it'd be a bit of a piss take, to be honest. And then, Harry, how would you, how would you feel, or what do you think of Jordan even saying that he he thinks like Chari should be the backup fighter for this fight when you and Steve are both there? Uh, I would be like, say, if Chari got it, I would be fuming, like, because he's <laughs> he's lost to, he hasn't won a fight in a billion years. Um, Oh, shit. <laughs> Steve playing the tunes. <laughs> yeah, like, the Charia, tune. <laughs> like, I would be let you know, like, say if they give the fight to Aerobo, because obviously, like, I'm coming off a draw, which uh, as much as like some people feel like a I solid draw, be, though, a solid oh, draw. It, was, it was as solid a draw as you could get, but like, you know, like, I feel like I need to get. Get I like I feel like that I'd more deserving coming off a win. Like so, say if they if they'd give it to Aimable, I'd be like, meh, fuck it. And then like I booted fuck out of Sharia. Like yeah, but if Sharia gets the title fight, I'd, just, I'd be bemused at that point. I'd just be like, what the that's fucking stupid. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think I think one of you guys should get the title shot, and then Charrier should have to fight one of you guys because uh, yeah. let let's make him fight in a one contender fight. Like let's not just like gift title shots especially with you guys like undefeated in your last four fights as well you know what I mean like that's 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 earned not given that's what I they'd, they'd probably give it to Rilla to be honest his eyes fucked back yeah, 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 yeah what um, was your man's name was it Beck or Back Back yes. Back um, uh, fractured one, uh, one of his eye sockets so Rilla's not back for a while yeah Sherry can fight back there you go that's a good fight that so Sharia can fight back to get back from his back to back losses. <laughs> I didn't know you were you were into the grime scene rapping there, like. <laughs> oh yeah. I know all about the grimes. What's called um one thing I don't think we, we asked you guys before in, in um you've both competed there as far as from where is what what is the atmosphere like in the indigo? Because it's a bit of a cauldron. Like you're up on the stage, the fans are going nuts. Like everything is centered in on that one, one place. What's it like in there? Uh, Steve, you go first. Uh, like I, I haven't fought there yet. I've, oh, sorry. I've you saw it. you saw George with his world title there. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it's um, it's intense. You know, um, especially if either side, either the crowds behind you or the crowds against you. Um, I've had it both. And, you know, really intense. Every, it's in your face as you're walking out sort of thing. Um, if you look outside the cage, obviously, you've got everyone high above you looking down on you sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, it, it is intense. And depending on what type of fighter you are sort of thing, it can either get you or, you know, or spur you on. Um, 
but yeah, it's it's something you need to ap- appreciate when you're in there. Um, thankfully, we get to we'll get to obviously experience it, and but not not a lot of people will. So yeah, it, it's a good crack to be in there. Yeah, because it's becoming a bit of a staple um, yeah. of Cage Warriors as a venue. Harry, what was it like uh, when George won the title in there? Because like the place erupted. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like special. It's it's weird. It's kind of got like the best of both worlds as far as like small, like you know, like smaller local venues where it's like dead intimate and, mm. and you you know like it's crammed in. But then it's also still got a bit of that like you know big arena feel to it. Um, but yeah, like it was, it was just sort of parading around the cage with George while bawling our eyes out, and like we could pick out people in the crowd who'd come. Like so you'd, we'd look into the crowd, oh, there's Lou, oh, there's George's last, oh, this is like you can see them. Um, yeah, it is, it is like a special venue. I'm I'm glad I'm getting a fight in it. Um, I'm not gonna lie, like every time I've looked at it, I've thought, man, you could probably do a stage dive after you won, but then. What if people just didn't catch you and you just fucking like napped yourself? In fairness, I'd, I'd definitely pay to see the save dive, but like if you jumped at me, I'd probably step out of the way. Yeah, yeah, like that's <laughs> what I'm thinking. Like, like how how do you get people on the same page where you're like, right, I'm going to jump on top of you and you need to like support support me as a group? Like, you get, you get it, all, I don't you think it's to worth the risk. They need to start doing a clap and then their hands are already in the air, so they'll go for it. Like, Sounds like Risky. a man of experience here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Baz is an emporious stage driver. That's <laughs> my crack here. We need to have business or else we're Graham Boland's going to have us barred. Especially you, Harry. Uh, lads, you're taking on each other on November 4th. How does it, how, how, Steve, how do you get your hand raised on November 4th? Live in the Indigo at the O2 on UC Fly Pass. And if you want tickets, get onto Steve's Instagram. Basically, just don't let don't let Harry uh, overwhelm me, sort of thing. Um, his, his chin could be a bit suspect, as we saw in the last fight. <laughs> I mean, it hits fucking hard, to be fair. Yeah, so but, um, I'm going to try and avoid that. <laughs> so, you know, it's go- it's going to be a tough fight, no matter what. You know, we're both we're both gritty fighters. Um, we both tend to walk forward, so it, it's just going to be who can sort of take the punishment for the longest I think and um, go from there but I'm, I'm, I'm aiming for a stoppage or a KO so that's how I see it going and Harry yeah. Houdini Hardwick what type of magic trick are you going to pull off November 4th to get your hand raised make sure to get into Harry's Instagram for tickets as well um, yeah I feel a similar assessment to Steve um, it's just like I, I really am looking for the finish like I, I want my first finish in Cage Warriors and I've picked a fucking tough one, you know, 13 fights, no, not being finished, but I'm still going to fucking look for it. It's been a long time. I've only ever been finished once. And that was a, yeah. by, my, by my mistake back in the day. <laughs> yeah, like, I have to think, it doesn't even, like, your record goes back that far. It doesn't even say it. it just says loss, regional. Like, it, you know, yeah. like they long, were, long, long time, yeah. When shit wasn't recorded properly. Guys, you have to you have to love a fight where uh, people say, "Oh, whoever just can't take the damage anymore is gonna lose." Like that's 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 <laughs> what you want to see. These two are absolute legends of the game. We we love both you guys. We think we're massive fans, of both of you guys. Um, normally we probably secretly have a favorite uh, between two fighters, but with you guys, I think just let let the best man win, and we're gonna be there in the night. We can't wait to see the fight play out. Uh, it's gonna be epic. This one is going to be number one contender. The next, uh, the winner of this fight is definitely going to fight for the belt next. They have to. Um, two absolute top guys. So uh, thanks a million for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. Um, we'll probably um, be chatting to you before we head over to November or to London in November ourselves. Um, if you have been watching this on YouTube, make sure to like, share, subscribe. That really helps us. And helping us is helping you. And if you're watching this on USC Fight Pass, make sure to hit a favorite button. And as always, stay energized. Energized, Shaw. Up the Irish. Been sussing you guys a couple of times. I've seen a couple of clips. I think you've done some interviews with Dylan Moran and that. But I, I, I saw. So keep going. Keep up the good work, guys.